Uh, we would like to start by thanking Developmental Cell for highlighting our paper in celebration of the 10th anniversary of Developmental Cell. I would like to start by introducing uh, my co-authors for this paper, uh, Sakan Yu, a very talented graduate student who is first author, and Ching Den, a very talented postdoctoral fellow who is second author. So what we'd like to do is just talk through some of the movies that highlight the novelty uh, of the paper. Uh, the focus of the paper was to understand how cell signaling is regulated in vivo and how we can manipulate cell motility by controlling cell migration in vivo. So first I'd like to introduce, introduce the transgenic that was used um, for many of the studies. We uh, drove expression under the neutrophil specific promoter NPO and you can see that in the larvae 72 hours post fertilization you have a highly dynamic, motile population of neutrophils within the head region and a much more stationary population of neutrophils within the caudal hematopoietic tissue. This allows us to look at motility uh, and polarization of uh, cell signaling, both in randomly migrating uh, neutrophils within the head as well as neutrophils that get recruited uh, to a wound. Um, so one of the first uh, images that I'd like to show you is our ability to very finely look at the polarity of cell signaling as neutrophils are migrating in vivo. We've used two probes here. One is for stable F-actin by this eutrophin uh, probe fused to GFP, uh, which labels a population of actin at the rear of the neutrophil as it's migrating in vivo. We also use life act ruby, and this labels both dynamic and stable F-actin. And then we can subtract this image to look at the population of dynamic F-actin at the leading edge. So what this shows you is that we can very uh, finely see the temporal and spatial dynamics of F-actin as neutrophils are migrating in vivo. We also developed probes to look at um, PI3 kinase signaling as neutrophils are migrating in vivo. And this is a laser wound. And what you can see uh, in the very bright areas uh, by ratiometric imaging are where there's active PI3 kinase signaling as indicated by the accumulation of the PHAKT uh, probe. And what you can see is the neutrophils pause at a wound uh, that you get a loss of polarity of PI3 kinase signaling. When neutrophils are migrating either towards the wound, you can see a very high signal at the leading edge, uh, both in bifurcating pseudopods and then it will dominate within the pseudopod uh, that gets selected. As a neutrophil migrates away from the wound, you also see that the PI3 kinase signal is predominantly at the leading edge of the cell. So what I've shown you is that we can look at the dynamics of that actin. We can also look at the polarity of signaling within neutrophils as they're migrating in vivo. Here, I was first developed in Dr. Claus Hans' lab, and here I put in zebrafish neutrophil. Um, right activation is a reversible process so we can control rack activity spatially and temporally. In this movie, you see an uh, illumination at a neutrophil at one pole, and uh, subsequently the opposite pole or induced membrane protrusion. Therefore, rack activity is sufficient to induce membrane protrusion in live neutrophils. In this movie, I express for the activated rack in zebrafish neutrophils. And basically, I kept hitting the edge of neutrophils to guide them to spread right. And why I did this is just I wanted to convince people that we can manipulate look side migration in vivo. Then we combined PRAC with Pro for stable f -acting. This is a controlled movie. During food activation, stable f is localized at the tail. In this movie, PI3 kinase is inhibited, and under PI3 kinase inhibition, surprisingly, PRAC for the activation of PRAC can induce protrusion, but polarity of f actin dynamics is reversed. So this suggests PI3 kinase regulates polarity of f actin dynamics in a separable pathway from, from RAC mediated protrusion. And this was very unexpected, and I remember I was very excited when I took this movie. To summarize the highlights of our findings, what we found is that rack activation at the leading edge using photoactivable rack was sufficient to control where cells migrate in vivo. And this was surprising, but what was even more surprising is when we inhibited PI3 kinase in these rack activated cells, we blocked this uh, rack induced motility, suggesting that PI3 kinase can also act independently of RAC activation at the leading edge to affect some motility. 
I also would like to highlight that I think um, this paper really represents the future of what we can do in vivo to analyze cell signaling as uh, neutrophils are migrating uh, in different types of environments. And I hope that it helps to open uh, future avenues of research that provide additional insight into the mechanisms that regulate cell motility uh, in live organisms. So again, I would like to thank uh, uh, Developmental Cell for selecting our paper to be highlighted for the 10th anniversary. So thank you very much.